Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is our Rice News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni. Great Malabite. Good, Good morning, Ruben. Or should I add your new title? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we have to clear, clear that from higher authority. <laughs> Good morning, Victoria Tundu MK Aviola. Good morning. Yes, in that little Danny. black dress, always looking splendid. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes, let's start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. Of course, we're starting with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. Well, some guys are questioning why always this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. That's what we are. Of and course. we state it. All the time. <laughs> so let's start with uh, this day. Now, the lead story, inflation hits 17-year high at 20.52%. Higher in Ebony, Rivers Bayelsa, analysts have a need to formulate, implement policies to boost food supply. CBN, Nigeria's attitude to foreign goods, impacting economy negatively. Ruben, you don't seem to agree with that. But we, we, we do a lot of import, we import a lot of things. And when you import so much, of course, with the Naira down there, it will affect the price of goods. But what I will advise one and all, please, always look for the Nigerian-made alternative to any good. They are far cheaper. After no, you need productivity. Yes, but okay. no, if you go to the supermarket today, Ruben, there are those who prefer the Nigerian made tissue to the, the foreign made tissue to the Nigerian made tissue. Look for the Nigerian made product, the ones that we produce. There are people who still prefer the foreign made product, and uh, that is one of the problems. How about quality? Quality, Definitely. Nigerian products are up there with quality. Let's not be too hard on ourselves. We export a lot of uh, manufactured goods to West African countries, and they are very happy with it. We shouldn't be the ones complaining. Yes, where there's quality problem, we'll say so, Ruben. But so we import a toothpick from Ghana, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Why shouldn't we produce our own toothpick? Uh -huh. But there are goods we produce. So let's patronize Nigerian By goods Nigeria. where they are available. Yeah. And I think nobody can contest that because our manufacturer, manufacturers are going through a lot. So if you don't patronize Nigerian made goods, what uh, it, in time past, what they call Japanese goods, Japanese products, with time, they refine these products and they are best in the world today. So I think we should continue to produce. But that is just one leg of the story. But we need Forex yes. to be able to produce. Yes, of time. course, manufacturers import their raw materials. They import machineries and they do so with foreign exchange. And with the Naira taking a bashing, and that's where CBN has to do something uh, real quick. Um, of course, it's going to also impact on inflation. Not to talk about food inflation, which is at an all time high. Farmers find it difficult to assess their farms. Farmers paying fee. Levy, call it whatever, to bandits. You think that will not impact on uh, the price of goods? Of course, with diesel at an all-time high, you have to transport these goods with lorries that use diesel. So we're in a quagmire, so to speak. So for many Nigerians, they will be asking, how come the president is saying that he has done so well? when we are feeling so much pinch in our pocket, in our kitchen, and almost everywhere you look. Not to talk about insecurity, but we're dealing with inflation this morning. You trash that a lot with Rotus. Other newspapers are also reporting this story. The Guardian newspaper, rising costs, supply chain disruptions, worsening inflation. May, sp may spiral out of control if triggers are not addressed. Experts warn. Higher interest rates, heightened loan default, put banks at risk, says Moody's was yet to come unless government com contains importation. Well, we have to look for ways to conserve our foreign exchange. Money we don't have, we are spending. Now, the Punch newspaper also that same story, 20.52% inflation. 
economic crisis, job losses worsen, food prices soar. Nasima worries over rising prices, says companies face tougher times. Spike will throw more Nigerians into poverty, says the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Yes, one of the promises President Buhari made is to remove the 10 million Nigerians from poverty, uh, but it's like many more Nigerians are sinking into poverty. No thanks to the management of the economy. Of course, the inflation figures say it all. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper also reported that inflation surge ravaging economies across Africa as Nigeria rises to 7 a 17 year high. Ghana, Malawi, Rwanda struggle with local currencies, complementary policies needed to boost food production. Now, the Business Day newspaper, New Poll, puts Obi in strong lead over Atiku Tinubu. Tinubu Kwankwanso dismissed poll as dubious, misleading. Of course, at Tedo Peter's side, um, the the, the, okay, the promoter of the ANAP Foundation was here yesterday to speak to the poll commissioned by that foundation. Not many are agreeing with him, expectedly. But again, that poll is about today's situation. 24 hours is a long day in politics, and I'm sure as we get into the campaigns, uh, that poll will not stay the same. But daily... A Sun newspaper, APC, PDP, LP fight as rating poll places Obi ahead of Atiku Tinubu. It's dubious, says ruling opposition party. So we elect credible leaders. Jonathan charges Nigerians. Yes, good luck, Ebele Jonathan, former president visiting another former president, Abdul Salami Abubakar, a couple of days ago in Mina. He's saying, telling the media, Speaking to Nigerians, please, vote credible Nigerians. Credible leaders, not dubious uh, people with dubious uh, character. I hope the electorate uh, will take note of that admonition. Now, the New Telegraph newspaper, MDA's padded 2021-2022 budgets with 300 million, 300 billion naira, 100 billion naira according to the icpc tracks 49.9 billion ghost workers salary from january to june 2022 senate probes nomco for dormancy since 2008 i think this is a serious indictment that this issue of planning or budget continues and this is the IPCPC that is making this revelation. 2021, as much as 300 billion uh, padding. And how do they do this? One project appearing in multiple agencies under this administration, fighting corruption. Happened in 2000, 2021, happened in 2022. Nobody is being brought to book. So how are we fighting corruption? If this kind of padding is going on, nobody is held accountable, nobody is brought to book, then it will continue because there are no consequences. Now, the Nation newspaper, but they judge why Atiku may lose next year's poll. No justification for IU to remain in office. Tambuwa leads 326 man campaign council. Wike Makinde Dr. C. Imoke listed as members. Yes, Chief. Ola Bode George, he will be on this set later. I think the question he will also have to answer. If you remove Ayo, so there is a guarantee that PDP will win the next election. If Ayo's person is what will stop your victory, will his removal guarantee victory? And how? Maybe he has to explain more. Now, the Friday leadership, that's the leadership newspaper, 1995 Doba Hotel Bombay. Bagoda Kalto's wife, Madi lied. My husband didn't plant bomb. Once Madi ex US envoy Russell Hunt question over husband's disappearance. Journalist missing since 1996. US embassy still mom. Yes. 
Shea Umari, the activist, made that revelation. That was not the question asked, it was asked, but he carefully veered and mentioned how patriotic he was many years ago when the U.S. US uh, official wanted him to plant bombs somewhere. And clearly insinuated that Bagwada Kato showed up after he rejected it. Well, I expected that by now, security agencies should be questioning certain people. Because Bagwada Kato has been missing since 1996, and uh, many unresolved murders in this country. So when there is a lead being given like this, you expect the security agencies perhaps to follow that lead and see if there is anything, any truth to that story. Now, the following newspapers, quickly, Daily Telegraph, the Daily Telegraph of UK, NHS doctors and nurses to walk ahead of coffin. Yes, funeral, that's the Queen's funeral now, to include members of the public alongside royalty and military at the Queen's requests. That's the request of the Queen before she died will be fulfilled. So there will be doctors, also public, public working alongside uh, royalty, the military, of course, the queen of everybody, not just the royals. Now, also on the front page of that, uh, the Daily Telegraph, uh, there's Prince Harry allowed to wear uniform in vigil of the grandchildren. Yes, the Duke of Success will wear military uh, uniform at the monarchs uh, at the vigil beside the coffin of his grandmother along his cousins. Tundu, are you happy that he's going to wear uniform? At least at some point. Yeah, we talked about this <laughs> yeah, yesterday. Talked about it. Yeah, I find the um, um, Prince Harry makes it when they, when they <laughs> left the royal family is perfectly within their rights. But I found it really distasteful that their whole survival plan post Mexit includes disparaging the royal family any chance they get. You don't do that with your former employer, especially when your former employer is your family member. It's really just crass behavior. However, crass behavior is completely distinct from criminal behavior. And I just thought it was really inappropriate you to give Harry you, and Andrew the same punishment. You know Prince Andrew is a problem for you want me. To go, you always want to go there. Yes, because honestly this the abuse of young women is a problem for me yes, and it's it like if it's not for a problem everybody. for you no not for everybody it turns out everybody a lot that of people is reasonable don't, like myself oh, are Ruben. yes you too definitely but a lot of people <laughs> don't seem to understand the gravity of what prince andrew was accused of doing it's actually really sickening so i think he should be the sole pariah in mufti that would be <laughs> ideal. <laughs> they should not add Harry to, he that, should be to that list. He should be exiled from the realm. I mean, what he did. But with regards to NHS, that is amazing. I remember the London Olympics as well, when the NHS was part of the opening ceremony. They had their huge float because the, the um, British are really proud of the NHS, yeah. and rightly so. And Yorin Bevan, the father, the founding father of the NHS, must be laughing in his grave because of all the opposition that he faced. Today, it's the pride of their country. Of Even is. though it's not what it ought to be, quite frankly, it's really severely underfunded. But it just any chance they get, they whip out the NHS because universal health care in a country like America, one of the world's leading you know, developed countries, is still a dream. Obamacare tried, and look at the resistance that got in America. So it's really amazing when you are able to provide health care for your citizens. As you were just saying a few minutes ago, it is something to be proud of, and you have to fly that flag as often as possible. I hope we get there in Nigeria. Everybody deserves quality health care. Yeah. It's a right, a fundamental right. Yeah. <clears throat> a few additional comments on yeah. uh, Prince Harry. Uh, we were told that the Duke of York, that uh, Prince uh, Andrew, having been allowed to wear uniform today when the uh, four children of the Queen keep vigil, you know, um, in front of our coffin. Uh, palace officials also moved in and said, look, I mean, everyone should be uh, made to feel welcome at the burial of, uh, you know, their mother, their grandmother, and the queen, everyone's grandmother, as Prince uh, Williams, uh, William referred to her, you know. So Prince Harry was also given a special dispensation to be able to wear the uniform tomorrow when the eight grandchildren of the queen, you know, will keep their own uh, vigil. Uh, vigil. And I think it's only fair. He spent, after all, 10 years 
uh, in the military, and he had two tours of duty in Afghanistan. So wearing a, uni uh, uh, a military uniform would not be a strange thing to him. However, on Monday, he and uh, Prince Andrew, you know, uh, will still appear in, uh, you know, regular suits at the uh, barrier. But it's okay, as uh, was indicated, to make everyone feel uh, really uh, welcome. But so far, you know, great uh, celebration of a woman who with so much impact and influence across the world. And we hope that uh, this will provide an opportunity for the family as they share the grief, you know, uh, you know uh, with the rest of the world uh, in coming together and moving on. Now, but let's talk about ASU. Yes. On September 12, you know, the federal government of Nigeria took ASU to court, the National Industrial Court, yeah. the Court of Justice, P.I. Uh, Aman. Uh, and then on that occasion, the other parties involved in the matter had not filed their processes. The matter will come up today for further mention, right? We hope that the matter will be treated expeditiously. And I think it's a bit unfortunate that Serap and five others who have tried to file a joint application have not been allowed by the court. You know, they request that there should be a consolidation of the uh, various uh, matters. But the residual matter, or is it the rest in the matter? You know, we would like to see how it is. Uh, you know, uh, the result. The outcome. Yeah. Is... Because now, Professor Emmanuel Osodeke is saying that there are certain irreducible minimums. You know that they cannot. Uh, that ASU cannot uh, go beyond. But that if those minimum conditions are met, uh, then of course ASU will call off the strike. He did mention this irreducible minimum. Yeah, he did now. Because he was on this program, and I asked him that no, this question. Revitalization. What is the irreducible minimum? He said we should go and look at the collective no, bargaining. No, no. Well, those. yesterday when they had a press okay, conference, now they have irreducible ahead minimum. of the matter in court. You know, he, he highlighted some of them, including revitalization of uh, universities, the payment of uh, and allowances, and then removing the clause about no work uh, do pay. However, he made another point which I found interesting. He said, well, if the uh, National Industrial Court rules that university teachers should go back uh, to, to work, then they will have no option. So if that happens, as it may well happen, then it will be nice to see ASU also, you know, respecting the rule of law. But even if ASU does so, uh, the problems with the university system we still have to be addressed. Yes. Many people have come to call for a paradigm shift, either in terms of autonomy or financing and all of that. These are issues that we still have to uh, address. Otherwise, a few months down the line, this MSU and the other unions, the three other major unions in the universities, they still go on strike. Finally, the Lagos State Government is proposing to shut down uh, Ladipo Market, and I think Oyingo Market. You know, uh, due to uh, environmental issues, uh, you know, people not respecting regulations with regard to the disposal of waste. I hope that this will be managed in such a manner that it will not be politicized and it will not become, you know, another ethnic conflict issue. Because you recall that in the past, last year, for example, when the Lagos State Government shut down uh, the Ladipo market for the same reason, it became a Yoruba versus Ibo matter. I hope that they will manage it well, the process, and uh, you know the stakeholders involved, so that we don't have that tension. Because this is political season; anything could be blown out of proportion. Robert, you mentioned Oyibo and Ladipop markets. Uh, well, these are two different markets, really, and I know Oyibo market very well. There is you a, have a shop there? No. And because I know some of you, you no, are part no, journalist, no. part trader. No, no, I'm not a trader. Okay. I, I can clarify that easily. <laughs> uh, but I do shop there sometimes, you okay. know. And um, um, in terms of management of refuse at yeah. Onyibo and Ladipo, bringing both together, I'm curious about why. Because there's a huge uh, Loma uh, refuse bin mm. at Onyibo, which is well used well used, I can tell you that. So when you mention Yibo and you mention Ladipo, which is dominated by certain people, I hope somebody is not trying to be funny there. Well, yes. I'm just quoting. Uh, no, I know. I'm, I'm just raising that point. When the market refuse is well managed, and the law enforcement, the kind people that are always there to enforce it, 
at on Igbo market. You know this Igbo market very yeah, well. Very well. Right. Right. We, should pay, we should pay attention to where you go after office hours. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Emma. Thank you.